Okay, uh, this is part two in a series on messing with the um, uh, Canhoon Smart Plug. Uh, last uh, video we SSH'd in, saw that there were certain commands, and also at the very beginning mirror we uh, did a port scan. We found that there is a web server running on there uh, on port 80, but our BusyBox doesn't have an HTTPD uh, daemon in it, so we're, we have to figure out where is this... Uh, this program coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'll just use find. Let me clear the screen here. Find slash say we're starting in root. I name meaning look for a file with this name. The I means case insensitive, although it's probably going to be lowercase. And we'll say anything with HTTP in the name of the file. So we'll run that, and we get a couple of files here. Definitely seeing some things starting at startup called u httpd, uh, but really anything in a bin folder. And here at the very bottom we can see under uh, usr, we've got sbin, and there's our program. So let's go ahead and run that with a dash h for help. We do that and we do get a list of, of commands here. So we can definitely start up another instance and have our own web server running. But we already have one running on port 80. Uh, and really no need to get a second one running if we can figure out where the files for that are stored. If we go to our root directory, and we list it out, right there is a www folder. So let's go ahead and move into that folder. And again, it's giving us some sort of index list of the root folder of the web server, but there's no files there. So let's go ahead and just create one. Let's just go touch one.html. So we have an HTML file here, it's empty. There's nothing in it, but let's go ahead and go back to our index list here and click refresh and there it is. So it is giving us an index list of the files in here. So again, this thing only has 32 megs of RAM and the, the storage on it is even less than that. Um, so you're not gonna be doing a lot of storage on here, but we could definitely throw some scripts in here. And if this web server runs similar to other HTTPDs, uh, such as BusyBox, we could have executable scripts in here. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, also, you know, I could click on this to go into that file, but it's empty. I, I could also, you know, echo h1 hello world, close the tag, and put that into our one.html. And if I was to bring that back and click on that, now we get a hello world. So you can put your HTML files in there. But again, we're going to make an executable script. So again, uh, usually these will be put in a folder called CGI bin. So let's make a directory called CGI dash bin and this is in our www folder. So we'll hit enter and we'll move into that folder. And we will create a file, uh, basically a shell script file. So I did see when I ran BusyBox earlier that we do have Vi installed. So we do have that as a text editor. So let's go ahead, Vi, and I'll call this one on dot CGI. Okay. Now, this is a small device. It doesn't have bash on it. It just has a basic shell. So we're going to say bin, dot, uh, bin slash sh for our shebang line, not bash. Uh, and if you remember my tutorials on creating CGI scripts for HTTP uh, daemons, we can do uh, content dash type. So we have to echo this. If not, it's, it's not going to run properly. And we're going to say that it's a text file. But what type of type text file? It's an HTML file. And then we need at least one empty line after that. After that, we can write a shell script however we normally want. So if you remember correctly, let me go ahead and um, turn on my camera here. OK, so there is the plug with the light and I've exited out of our text editor here and if you remember last time we were able to go echo one to turn the light on into sys class LEDs TP link blue and I'm using tab to autocomplete here uh, relay I hit control L just to bring that up in the screen um, and then brightness and that turns the light on, and the same thing, but putting a zero into there turns it off. So let's go ahead and just copy this. Woo! Copy this. So highlight it, 
by into our file and I will just go into edit mode and center click to put that in there and then we have to make it executable so change mod plus X are on CGI and now if we bring back our web browser here and we put in the IP address of the device forward slash I already have it here because I already tested this out CGI bin slash on dot CGI it turns the light on great so anytime we want to turn the light on we can just go to that URL or call it from a script um, let's go ahead and copy our on to a new file called off.cgi and then we'll go into off and we'll change it to be off so we just change that zero to or that one to a zero and now if I change in here I can go to our off script and turn it off so I can go back and refresh the on page or I can go forward and refresh that and I can turn them on off with a web browser meaning that I can do this from my tablet or phone as well uh, so that is making a ba very very basic script so that's great we have that uh, we also want to give some sort of indication to the user so let's real quick just add to these scripts a little bit of output we'll say echo and we'll make the font big by using these h1 tags and this is for off and I'm just gonna highlight that and go into our on file and change that to be oops on so now when we run those scripts we get a little bit of a uh, visual output on our device. Of course, we're going to make something much nicer in the future uh, with buttons and whatnot. But for right now, let's we have an on script and an off script. Let's make a toggle script. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now copy either one of those into a script called toggle.cgi. And then I'll go into that toggle.cgi file. And as I said last time, we're echoing, we're putting into this file, because everything in Linux, anything in Unix, Unix and Unix-like systems is a file, whether it's hardware or not. So we're writing to this hardware as if it was a just a plain text file. We can also read from it. So what we're going to do is we're going to read from it by using the cat command, and we're going to put that into a variable. I'm just going to call my variable x, just to keep things simple. And then I'm going to use these little back ticks. These are not single quotes. These are not apostrophes. These are, at least on uh, standard QWERTY keyboard here in the US, the little, it's the button next to the one on your top row of your keyboard. So what that's saying is we're going to put a command in here, and whatever the output of that command is, we're going to put into the variable called x. So what we're going to do is we're going to cat out. So we're going to read this file. And if it's on, it will equal 1. And if it's off, it will be 0. So what we need to do now is we need to check that value after we get it. So I'm going to use an if statement. And I'm going to say if x, dollar sign x, saying it's a variable, dash eq, if it equals zero, well, then we're going to do something. And if it's anything else, we're going to do something else. And then we're going to close that if statement with an i or fi, which is if backwards. OK, so here we're saying if it's off, well, let's go ahead and copy this fix that indentation because it's auto indenting, which I can't stand. And um, here we want to say on and change this to one. So what we're doing here is we're checking if x is zero, then well change the value to one and tell the user it's on. But if it's is if it isn't zero, if it's anything else, which it would just be one, we're gonna turn it off. Okay, so we're gonna save that. We're going to open up our web browser again, and we're going to go to a toggle.cji. And as you can see, it turned it on. If I refresh the page, it turns it off. And if I refresh it again, it turns it on.
refresh again, it turns it off. And we get the visual output right here on the screen. Again, this will run in pretty much any web browser because the script is on the server itself. So it doesn't matter whether you're using wget. Actually, let's do that. <laughs> That'd be fun. So let me open up a new shell here. So the top shell here is the shell on the device. This bottom shell here is my local desktop. I can say wget and I can do this and I'll do dash o and I'll just do the output so I don't save any of the output. I'll just say output to screen. I'll say dash q for quiet so I don't see the download process and everything. So if I hit enter, it tells me right here in my shell that the light's on. I don't even have to be in the same room as it. If I run it again, I can turn it off. Once you create a script like this on a server running on a web server, uh, you can access it from any device that has internet access. Uh, unlike client-side scripts where if we had something going on with JavaScript, and I'm not saying anything bad about JavaScript, I love JavaScript, it wouldn't work with wget. It wouldn't work with pretty much any text-based uh, web browsers. Um, but since everything's being done on the server side through this CGI file, which is just a shell script in this particular case, although you can use any programming language, I can write something in C and put it on that device and run it this way. Um, but as you can see, I can very easily just keep calling it with wget from my desktop from any computer that has access to that device through the network uh, because right now we don't have any passwords or anything on it which you can apply passwords um, and also eventually it's going to be on an encrypted network and all that jazz but just wanted to show you that you can use a web browser on a tablet on a phone you could probably get a phone that is 15 years old, way before smartphones, if it had a web browser, which phones back then had very, very basic web browsers, and you could control this device from it if you had the network connection with it. Um, so that's it for this tutorial. We're going to play with this device again more next week. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description, and um, also there should be a link in the description to all the notes from this project, so go ahead and check those out. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember and my wife, Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.